AI system, when used properly, it can open up more possibilities for people to create more art and, you know, in a personal life. We live in the world of artificial intelligence. What was only possible in science fiction has now become our reality. We seek the advice of computers, not just to build rockets, but in our daily lives, what to eat, where to go, even how to deal with complicated human relationships. One realm we might have considered uniquely human was in the creative arts, more specifically activities like painting. But as we hear from our globalists this week, this area also can be enhanced, not replaced by AI. Let's meet Dr. Jean O, oh, the Associate Research Professor at the Robotics Institute of the Carnegie Mellon University, the creator or mother of the painting robot, Frida. So, Dr. O, oh, welcome to The Globalists. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're glad that you made the time to join us. Um, let's start off with that one question. Who or what is Frida? <laughs> That's a great question. So, uh, in a simple sentence, Frida is a robot that helps people uh, to paint. So. Some people call it Frida as a painting robot. Mm. So Frida has the capability to actually uh, add brush strokes to the rear canvas uh, to produce a paint mm. based on user inputs. So we can descri describe what we want to paint mm. and Frida can help. Yeah. And Frida, mm -hmm. I understand, is named after um, a, a Mexican artist, Frida Kahlo. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us a little bit about why she was named after Frida Kahlo? Yes. So and when we first started the project, I just named the, our robot Frida because I was a big fan of Frida Kahlo. You, and, have, you have Frida on yes. your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because Frida Kahlo, as an artist, she um, went through a lot of disabilities and difficulties in her life and pain. Uh, and she overcame those like difficulties through like art. Mm. Uh, so it was very inspiring. And then later, I turned that into an acronym. Mm. So Frida actually stands for a framework and robotics initiative mm. for developing arts. Oh, <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. So it's, it represents the artist herself, but also sort of the whole project <laughs> itself as well. Oh, wonderful. So um, describe a little bit more about this painting that Frida does. I mean, we talked about um, red, white, or blue skies, but also happiness, mm -hmm. sadness. How does a robot do that? Let me first ask you that question, like, what do you want to paint uh, with Frida? Mm -hmm. Like, think about it inside your head and then uh, think about how you pass that information to Frida. Mm. So you first use the language, like mm. uh, describing using colors or the contents or some emotion. So Frida system tries to support all these different modalities, mm. like how to understand natural language mm -hmm. and then translate that information into the painting space. So that answers your second question, like how does it work? Mm. So what's the relationship between this language description 
and something like in the image space. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are many other tools that are really doing an awesome job. So Meet Journey, mm -hmm. OpenAI's DALI too. Mm -hmm. They can produce very high quality, like amazing quality digital images. But the digital images are in the virtual space. Mm. So you can see it on the monitor, and if you want it as a physical copy, you can print it mm. using a printer, but painting it is completely different story. So what we do is turning this success in the AI, more digital space, into the real life, oh. which is somebody has to take actions. Okay. Somebody has to put paint on the canvas, and who's going to do it? So, Frida is the robot that's actually uh, capable of taking those actions. Mm. So there is a lot of robotics challenges to deal with. So it, it's, <laughs> when you say the two parts, it is mm -hmm. one part of recognizing or, or creating, yes. um, you know, when you say, let's say, a sunset at a port, then the computer will, will come up with um, this image of what a sunset would look mm -hmm. like, the colors, the patterns, what it involves. And then the, the robotics comes in, and the robotic Frida, mm -hmm. uh, is, which is sort of an arm from what, what I understand, yes. <laughs> actually paints in strokes yes. using oils or watercolors mm -hmm. or whatever is needed to create the image. Yes. So, so it is two parts. It right, two right. Parts. And then just to add a couple of things there. So even in this uh, generation space, a lot of other people have tried is replicating that image. Uh, but in what we do is to optimize in this uh, space called the semantic space, which is even if it's, it, it, let's say the given uh, input was a photograph, like of somebody, mm -hmm. uh, our end goal is not like photocopying that mm. image, but capturing the portrait of that same person. So how do we capture that characteristics or the gist of the personality? So that semantic space kind of provides that field to optimize. Mm. So uh, even if we redo the same kind of an input multiple times in different paintings, it's every, every piece is slightly really? different. So, so uh, that painting you have beside you, Frida drew yes. mm -hmm. of Frida Carlo. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. was that from a picture? That this one was based on a photograph. And uh, the the randomness or uh, like the difference, like uniqueness of each piece, sometimes comes from that semantic optimization, and sometimes just naturally comes from the uncertainty of taking actions. Mm. So even for a human painter, if they redo the same exact paint, it's impossible to produce mm. like the photocopy kind of. A same exact piece because of that uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And then when we use the text description as an input, we kind of do the optimization in the same way. So even if it imagines the, some like image of a sunset in Busan, it's not going to paint one image that's like, like initially. Like a photo. Right, right. So it will kind of continuously looking at the canvas because it's adding brush strokes. And then because of that uncertainty, you don't really see the progress that you imagined. Yes. So there is a gap between what Frida imagines with in simulation and the real, real life. So a lot of research went into how to reduce that gap. So when Frida creates a portrait of Frida Carlo. This is one that has a sort of a surreal um, image to mm -hmm. it. But if she were asked another time to create another mm -hmm. image of Frida Kahlo, it would not look like this. Exactly. Actually, I brought another uh, painting that was done based on the text. So mm. the text input was Frida Kahlo and a red robot. Ah. So, yeah. so that would create a different yes. portrait of right, Frida. Right. So it looks like Frida. Uh, but it's it's a slightly different. Mm. Does that mean artists are now out of job? You know, 
do we not need artists anymore? I hope not. <laughs> and it really depends on the definition of art and artist. I don't know what happened to this world. <laughs> like, why do we need to go to the museums to see art? Or trapped only inside like prestigious locations? Because what I believe is art is a way of a communication. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a self-expression tool. And it's, it has a lot of benefits, like children uh, need to play with the paint and, you know, create things. It's, it's very important, but I don't really think I'm seeing enough of it. Mm. And I believe art should be everywhere and mm. it's for everyone. So definitely the quality of Frida painting is not the greatest artist quality. So maybe at some point we, we will be able to, mm. uh, but still the whole purpose is to encourage more people. Like maybe mm. I, I'm not an artist, but I always wanted to be a painter or I wanted to express myself in paintings. Mm. So some of the paintings we have done last year, for instance, you know, last year, a lot of things happened like war in Ukraine mm. and in the States, United States, there was a huge issues uh, with women's rights. Mm -hmm. So we had a series of paintings on those issues mm. and it's not, Frida's thought, or Frida cares about the world, but it's it's me. Mm. I that's those are the things that I care about, and it's the way of expressing my thoughts through painting, and that's enabled by Frida. If I have a robot named Suni, yes. Um, mm -hmm. If I wanted this kind of expression, mm -hmm. I could have Suni base family, daughters, love, you know, yes. whatever mm -hmm. it is based on my thoughts. Yes. So everyone could, could be creative. Yes. Everyone exactly. could be an artist. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And even with the Frida, I like a lot of people approach me and ask a portrait of someone they care or their dog, you know, family portraits. And people really like that idea, like creating something in a physical space. That's different from printing, printing a photograph. Something out. Yeah. So they really appreciate the tangible interaction and they can have a real copy that is very unique. There's only one. This just opens up more uh, possibilities for people to create more art and, you know, in a personal life. And we want to encourage the children mm. to paint more. Oh. But these days when I see children, even very young ones, they just look at their phone, iPad, playing computer games. I do not like that. Mm. And I believe robotics is a way to maybe encourage them back to the real life, real interaction, mm -hmm. talking to real people. So, yeah. But <laughs> I, it, it's amazing how that real world yeah. is still so different from our right. real world. It's not actually a playground. It's a, it's a playground mm -hmm. in a different world. Yes. Yeah. The next generation will live in a different world. And it's, it's not going to be the same, and which is good. And mm. it's, it's very hard to predict as the world is changing so fast and quickly. Uh, uh, so I'm also in discussion with many other people, how to educate the next generation, like do, what do they need to uh, learn and like what are the things that are needed uh, to mm. prepare for the future world. Mm. So these are all kind of related to our work as well. So, mm. yeah. I personally wanted to be an artist. Now I can actually collaborate with Frida to express my ideas in painting.
Dr. O, I mean, as an engineer and scientist in AR, who is a female mm -hmm. and born and raised mostly in Korea, from yes. I've heard, that's a very unusual path for a Korean woman to take. How did you get into this area? Right now, that is, and I hope to see more uh, in the future. My career path is somewhat unusual. Uh, I didn't study computer science until like after uh, mm. college. And that was before internet and all these things. Mm. It was early 90s. So I didn't even uh, have an understanding of what a computer account meant. So it was a drastic shift, but I really liked it. Mm. And it turned out uh, to be an introduction to an AI uh, mm. course that I really enjoyed. So that kind of changed my direction. Mm. And then after um, completing my PhD, actually, I took another step. And then I really wanted to try this AI idea on robots. Robots. So I actually invested. Building something. <laughs> yes. Good. So I invested uh, a few more years, really starting from scratch on how to use the real robot perception mm -hmm. system and you know the, uh, the whole nine yard. Yeah, it was a kind of an adventurous yeah. journey. Uh, but. I, it's just my personality. I mean, if I want to do it, I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Frida, I mean, yes. it, it involves not only AI robotics, yes. but the creative arts. Do you have a creative <sighs> arts DNA in you somewhere? Or did you study? I mean, where does the creative arts come from? Um, I mean, I don't think I have like the gene, <laughs> but I always liked art, music, um, even if I was never good at it. Mm. I played the violin. Cool. <laughs> so you, you, you did <laughs> yes. um, personally do some performing yes. arts. Yes, so uh, I mean, I was playing in an amateur orchestra in college. So I, I had a lot of friends who are in that sector. So musicians, artists, painters, sculptors. Mm. So I always wanted to work with them because they're my friends, like architects. So they were the like cool friends mm -hmm. that I always wanted to be part of. <laughs> You're the and this scientist. Was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was my kind of a gateway to oh. really make that connection. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really fun. And what do your artist friends say now about your creation? So the, the background story is I came to the States actually to study filmmaking because I really wanted to do it, like documentary making. And they are all saying, you should have done it like back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you should yes. have been a movie maker. Right, right. But, yeah, now, I, director, yes, yeah. but now I'm uh, working on the Frida. It kind of went back to that road. So oh. I had a class. Uh, so I taught a class last semester. And I just created a special theme. So do anything with robotics, but for filmmaking. So we had a kind of fun. So you you, you got people to sort of yes. <laughs> maybe cre use their juices for yes. the filmmaking. Right, so right. What did they create? Is so, there anything like, that you wanted to, oh, I should have done that? Oh, so yeah, so I kind of uh, had a few wish list projects that mm. students uh, can work on. And one thing was a stop motion movie, which the Welcome field is dying the because it, what stop Mr. motion Fox. movie is Woo. like you set the pieces and you move a little by little oh, and then. very old, old yes. fashioned. Right, right. Is that even alive? Is that still it's exists? dying. The field is dying, but there was a, a new movie called Pinocchio. And at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, now they are doing a special exhibit on how Pinocchio was made. It mm. took a long time, a lot of money. Every little yeah. film yes. um, center had to be right. put together and, and yes. glued and together. It takes, together. It takes yeah. really, really long time to make. But with the robots, we can kind of instruct, OK, I want the scene to be like this way. And then robot can do all the movements. So there was a one student group project that showed kind of promising results. So that was interesting. But those kind of are very fun projects, just to think about it. But it includes some of the most challenging robotics 
problems. Oh. So in order to make that happen, they have to work hard. <laughs> okay, so Frida at the moment is, is, a, is a painting robot, mm -hmm. but Frida tomorrow maybe? What, what is Frida going to evolve into? What do you dream um, for Frida's future? For Frida's future, um, so two kind of very different end. Uh, so as a researcher, this is my playground because in order to paint, there's a lot of robotics challenges and AI challenges that we have to tackle. So that's great research field. So it's been just great because I worked on like many other problem domains before, but this is the first time I get a lot of interdisciplinary uh, researchers coming uh, in and they want to collaborate with us. So it, it just created a tremendous opportunity for us to do a great research mm. and making real progress. And because it's a, such a pure fundamental research, when it's done, it is very applicable to manufacturing, construction. Mm. You know, painting is painting, yeah. so you can paint the, but it's the not, building. So it's not, it's not limited to painting. Right, exactly. Application. For exactly. example, what, what, what would an application that we haven't really thought about like kitchen scenario, so like people do not link how sculpting is linked to cooking. Sculpting? Sculpting. So sculpting, in a way, is changing one shape to another. And in order to do that, you need really dexterous manipulation skill on a robot. And that is one of the hardest robotics challenges. And if we solve that through sculpting, that means you replace Play-Doh with cookie dough. It's cooking. <laughs> and so we don't have yes. a robot yet that can actually do it what a chef does. Oh, uh, no. not at all. So there is a huge gap. But we're making baby steps. But these projects, since it's so fun, we may be able to make quicker progress because many people just you, you love know it. that although you said it was not replacing chef you know chefs around the world when they think it's like, oh my god now now our oh, jobs no, no. are out no chefs are very professional job category and we have chefs but that doesn't mean that i don't cook <laughs> i have to cook every day three times that's so like it's going to help time. you cook, <laughs> yes. not a chef cook. Right, not. right. That, that's completely different. And Frida, too. What I'm saying is artists, keep doing your job. Great work producing like very creative human space. But we also want to paint, too. It's just for cooking for a uh, mm. like daily meal. So it really expands the human capability yes. of a normal mm -hmm. human being. Right, right, right. So expanding it. Uh, and cooking, like people still do it, but art to me is becoming kind of something that's trapped in museum and not mm. many people continue, but I'd like to bring that back. Mm. So, so, so do you believe, you know, people have a lot of thought about AI and human beings in the future. Do you believe that AI and human beings will live in a harmonious way? That's what we hope for. And um, AI system, when used properly, it can really save a lot of time. And there's a huge benefit. It has great potential. But also, we need to be careful uh, about the negative side. Mm. And there are people kind of trying to predict what are the like what if scenarios and you know the negative ramifications. So the ethics in AI is a growing field. Mm. Like philosophers and uh, people from human studies are all getting together to be prepared mm. because it's it's very early. So there is not many legal regulations, for instance, because everything is new. Yeah. It didn't exist before, so there's no regulation, and also people do not know how to handle this. Mm. So it is a little bit chaotic right now, but at some point, people uh, who are working hard will come up with some idea to regulate to some extent, not like censoring, like, mm. oh, you have to ban everything, mm. but to some extent, to protect human rights, you know, human privacy, very important issues. But to take the advantage of the, these potential, I think, it, yeah. yeah.
Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the potential is, is enormous, mm -hmm. and we just have to figure out how to maximize it yes. in the way that benefits humankind. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. for having me. And that's it for me. I'll be back next week with another globalist who's putting Korea on the map. Sun Jie out.